Welch. This is the Fall 2007 Collector's Compilation video. Now, what is a collector? You're gonna find out exactly what that is at the end of this segment. But you know what a collector is? Basically, somebody that collects anything at all. It could be from car magazines, it could be from posters, it could be from action figures, you know, it could even be from sneakers. But you know, you're gonna find out all of that by the end of this. And the first one that we're gonna check out right now is Amanda Monjean, Poster Girl. She collects movie posters. You know, guys, just check it out. Hope you enjoy. My name is Ashley McCollman and I collect movie posters. About a year and a half ago I started collecting movie posters. It's hard to decide what posters I want to put up on my wall. It varies from mood. Sometimes I'll just put three horrors up or three comedies. Sometimes they have to color match. It's really making your room a mood room, really. So here's part of my collection. There's about 55 posters in here and we're going to put some up. have over 50 here in Toronto and then probably another 20 or 30 in Timmins. I think it might, it, it kind of is a lot to have that many posters, but I'm investing in the wallpaper. Running Scared is probably one of my favorite posters that I own. Mostly because I really like the design of it and it's blue, which is cool. Um, yeah, and it has a gun. I definitely think a movie poster can either help or destroy your film. If you have a really, really bad poster that's just completely plain white, they're just gonna kinda look at it and be like, oh, I don't care about that movie. The store is called 99 Video. And I probably come here about two times a week, maybe? Most of the time when I come in here, it's because I see that they've changed the posters outside. So then I'm like, well, maybe they put some good stuff in here. I try to have a system where I go from front to back or back to front so that I don't have to look at posters 20 times and before I realize I've already looked at it. And it's just about finding one that you want. So she, uh, quite often, I'd say. <laughs> See her quite often here, yeah. Well, actually, it's, uh, it's good for us because when we're done using it, it's, just, it's a garbage, so she's helping us out. Go out and buy posters. Lots and lots and lots of and be happy like me. The record's full of dirt. It's gonna sound like dirt. This is Dan. Hi, I'm Dan. He collects records. And this is his place of employment. A record shop. I gotta figure out my hours so I can keep in track. Dan really knows his records. Yeah, you learn a lot about records from just uh, being around them. Like just, it's not just about the look, it's about the feeling, the weight, you know. Sometimes maybe the smell. No, mostly the, the feeling. You can feel like, by touching a record I can feel, I can tell what, you know, what place in the world it came from, you know, what era it was from. You know, heavier it is, the older it is in general. You know, it's nice. The UK presses are nice and smooth and laminated covers. It's important. Dan loves his job because he loves his records. And he's sure got tons of them. I figure I got hundreds of records. Spent thousands of dollars. But you know what? I don't regret it. Yeah, it was a couple of years ago. Two years ago. And first records I bought was Dave Bowie's Heroes. I bought uh, Elliot Smith Either Or. I bought. Um, Basically all the Bob Marley records. They're so close to the original master recording and they have a way of just like immortalizing an artist, you know, like Tim Buckley. You get like, you can feel what was in his voice, you know. You get the closest to the essence of what was going on in that session. The thing with vinyl is there's billions of records out there. And uh, just... It's a treasure hunt, you know? 
never know what what you're gonna find. So wait, hold on. So tell me what is Jordan. I don't know what's going on with that. Are those fake or are those real? I don't know. Like, you can tell by the bubbles on the shoes, uh, the color, the stitching, and everything like that. It goes in depth like that, huh? Yeah, man. But you know who would know about Jordans? Jermaine Ingram has a great person that he's done for Jordan shoes. Check out this next compilation. Steven Mutu is a part-time collector of retro Jordan shoes. He has been collecting Jordans for the past three years. Building his investment, his collection carries six pairs of shoes with more to come. Steven discusses his introductions to retro Jordans. The first Jordans I got, I know my aunt was taking me, um, she would take me shoe shopping for my birthday. I was like grade four and we were, going, we were looking around Foot Locker and I go, Jordans? So the man comes up to me with the black and white original 11s. And I was like, eh, I gotta have them, I gotta have them. And then that was like my first pair. I'll never forget that. These joints right here, they are the Retro 5 joints, also known as the Green Beans Edition, you know. These joints usually run about, mm, I would say, $189 Canadian. These also are the Retro 5s. You know, they're, the nickname are called, they're called the Stelts, right? Um, I bought these for 190 Canadian. These joints right here, I picked these joints. They're called the Retro 3s, but the Retro 3 flip joints. These right here, probably my most exclusive J only because it's so rare. These are the original 4s. These ones right here, you know, a lot of people went to the store and picked them, themselves up one of these joints. I actually had these three, three weeks before they were released in stores because they came out early. I actually paid um, $230 for these joints. Here's some ways to tell, you know, that if a joint shoe is real and if it's fake. It's all about um, the material, feel around the material, right? Um, look inside the sole, right? See how the sole put it on, see how it fits you know, and know your shoe, like really know your shoe. Started collecting those coins when I was about eight, nine years old. First time when I saw the coins like that, uh, I was at my grandfather's place and he, he had a small collection, just a few coins. He showed them to me, he gave me one coin and that made me a little interested in collecting stuff like coins and uh, you know, different currency from different countries, especially Russia because I was living in Russia, it's my home country. So I was uh, a little concerned about how the old coins look and what they are and how they are. I have about 46 coins, 47 coins. Uh, the value is, uh, it's not that great because it's a uh, circulated money, so they've been used by people. I clean them once in a while, just, uh, you know, the regular, there's a special solution for cleaning coins and older household items even. And then uh, store, I just store them in the binders like that. It's easier because they're organized and they're, you know, you can access them anytime you want. This is the coin that I got from my grandfather. This is the first coin that started my collection. On this side of the coin, we have coat of arms of uh, Russian Empire. And if I flip this coin, you will see uh, Tsar Nikolai II, who's the last uh, Tsar of uh, Russia. It's an interesting hobby. and. It, it might look like it's an expensive one, but at the same time it's not because you can find pretty good, co uh, pretty good shaped coins for small amount of money and it's not that hard to start to collect them anyways.
What do you think was the favorite toy back in the day? Well, for me, the favorite toy was it's got to be Power Rangers, man. I had the Power Rangers, and I know they came up with a new one that could um that could morph. All you do is like flip their head around. Yeah, they had I, I think my favorite toy was actually the Turtle Band from back in the oh, nineteen ninety four. It's really doing it. For Turtle Band was disgusting, man. I remember all my friends had that. But anyway, in our next collector segment, we have Kyle Surowitz here. He has a massive, massive action figure collector. Let's check this one out. My name is Paul Scorez, I'm 28 years old and I collect action figures. Like a lot of people, especially Transformer fans, they're all big on Optimus Prime. And uh, right now, I guess as you see back at the house, I have a small shrine of all different Optimus Primes that have come out. Look at this display case, it just gives me ideas on how you'd want to display your stuff and also gives you an idea on how much your stuff is worth. I started collecting action figures when, probably when I was quite young. My parents used to buy a lot of action figures when I was um, younger and I used to make them, you know, buy me ones off checklists and things. But I didn't start collecting myself with my own money until the end of high school. I'm a big hero guy, I like the good guys. Um, so you, you gotta love the big leader Optimus Prime. Um, my favorite Transforming General is Prowl, because I guess I have a thing for police cars, so I tend to buy a lot of Prowl figurines. I'm big on a toy that has great articulation and um, looks good in general, especially the face. The head sculpt is a big thing for a figure for me, because it has to look appealing. I just enjoy collecting. It's it's a sense of satisfaction, like one little tidbit I can tell you is oh, there's this Toy Fair magazine that I get uh, every month and there's an article, a letter of the month here and it lists, it asks the, the magazine, you know, they want to know what the best X-Men figures are and they list off a group of figures that they feel are the best representation of the characters of that time and right here I have like 90% of that list. And that was well before this was even published. I enjoy collecting, it's, it's a fantastic hobby, and you know, it's just what I love to do. The kid in everyone never goes away. Once we pick up a toy, we never put it back down. Here's Tommy Chang and his collection of sports action figures. I collect uh, McFarlane's and Bobbleheads. Uh, McFarlane's are basically uh, action figures. I generally only watch like basketball, baseball, and hockey, so those are the ones I collect. The reason I collect them is uh, I just like collecting stuff. I've always collected toys when growing up, like G.I. Joe's, Transformers, and uh, I've always collected hockey cards, baseball cards, so I don't know, just growing up, I've always collected stuff, so just continue. I mainly buy them off uh, eBay, but you can get them anywhere from like Walmart to like Toys R Us. My parents don't actually like my collection. They consider it a waste of money. Like, I've showed my friends and they're not too impressed either. <laughs> they just think it's a waste of money as well. Um, but the neighborhood kids love it. Uh, the one I like the most is the one I just got recently, the Roberto Luongo with the retro blue uh, Canucks jersey. I just like the pose and that he was doing and then the jersey has like the color of the jersey. Looks good. What are you gonna do with all this? To me, I think it's a waste of money. I think I spoil him a little. I know he loves J.I. Joe, so I bought him, you know. So whenever a new one collection come out, I buy him. I don't know if that make him get in the habit of getting all this new little figuring. So whenever I say something like that, his father say, well, it's your fault. You did that when he was young. I told you don't buy him so many. I assume when he's in adulthood, he, he has to go out of it, but I guess not. So I'm going to wait and let his wife talk him into it. Sean Reed is definitely one of those guys who you would call a collector. He has had an obsession with cars since he was a young boy and finally started a collection in junior high. Now, at 30 years old, his collection is still alive. I recently had a chance to speak with him in an exclusive interview about his car fetish. Um, I think what got me into cars was probably, you know, the attention it had when I was growing up. Um, I had uncles, I had cousins that had, you know, 
pretty nice rides and stuff like that with chrome rims and tinted windows and all that kind of stuff. And I saw the attention that it uh, I gathered when you uh, pull up in the front of the building. Well, I've been collecting Super Street magazines for at least um, four or five years. Super Street was an up-and-coming um, import magazine in comparison to their competition or the other magazines out there. Was you know the the, the cover page was always uh, colorful. They always had a unique car on there. It was nice, and when you went to the pages, they had some pretty good articles. Sean doesn't subscribe to the magazine anymore. Instead, he reads them at his local chapter's bookstore. On his most recent trip, I joined him just to ask a few questions. Going to uh, chapters is much easier than subscribing to a magazine subscription for $16.95 when chapters allows you to go and read that magazine for as long as you like. I sat down with Sean's childhood friend Fitzroy to find out some of his earliest memories about Sean and his car fetish. At lunchtime, I remember we used to go down to the corner store and... Uh, Everybody else would be, you know, picking up chips, looking through dirty magazines, and Sean would be looking through all the car magazines, just flipping through them, you know, giving everybody info and feedback as to the new cars coming out. And throughout high school, I remember he started buying magazines all the time and subscribing to a few of them. Above all, the game Gran Turismo has become a bit of a ritual for these two. It's a racing game that involves players buying cars and customizing them in any way they would like to. So I guess in some way, Sean does own that dream car he's always wanted. From Centennial College, this has been another edition of Collectors. Well, that was Andrew Williamson's Collector, Super Street Magazines. Documenting somebody talking about magazines that they look at. Actually, you know what, if my opinion, I think that one was actually the best one. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, that's all the time that we have. That's all the uh, additions that we have for this year. Just follow seven collectors. I hope you guys enjoyed it, because I know I did. I think I'm going to keep this magazine. I'm looking for a car myself. Until next time.